Today we're going to be diving into five foods that can actually help fight cancer. And the first food we're going to actually talk about is green tea. Now, green tea contains catechins that have been shown to lower the risk of colon cancer, stomach cancer, esophageal cancer, cancers of the gut, actually, because you're sipping the green tea and it's flowing down uh, and uh, touching uh, your entire GI tract. Now, what's in green tea? Something called catechins, specifically EG, CG, all right, Edward, George, Charlie, George. And this is actually something that I've studied. Um, I'm a researcher. Uh, I have actually studied food as medicine in the lab, specifically green tea. And I can tell you that this is a natural chemical found in tea leaves um, that when you brew a cup of tea, the EGCG comes out uh, into the liquid. So whether you actually have tea bags, you have loose tea uh, leaves, uh, or you have some powdered tea, which is another form of getting it, and whether it is uh, green tea, whether it's matcha, you're all getting this catechin into your system. So what does EGCG do in the body? Well, something quite amazing. Uh, drinking tea has been shown by cancer researchers to lower inflammation, which is of course uh, one of the drivers for cancer. Green tea also boosts the immune system. Now, we all have cancers growing inside our body. It's a natural part of being alive. Uh, when our cells divide, uh, they make mistakes and each of those tiny little mistakes is a microscopic cancer. But our immune system wings by, finds that microscopic cancer and takes it out like a sniper. And so good, strong immunity is actually cancer fighting. And green tea actually does that as well. But the thing that I think is most remarkable is that the catechins found in green tea cut off the blood supply to tumors. Now, all tumors are harmless until they actually get a blood supply. And this is a process called tumor angiogenesis. Now, our normal cells, our normal tissues have angiogenesis. We need them in order to be able to heal our wounds. But tumors hijack this process, okay? And they actually feed themselves to get oxygen and nutrients. And when a cancer actually does that, that is actually what allows tumors to actually grow wildly. In fact, studies in the lab have shown that without a blood supply, tumors can't grow beyond about two millimeters in diameter. That's the size of the tip of a ballpoint pen. But the moment blood vessels can actually grow up and touch that tumor and feed it, that tumor can grow 16,000 times in just two weeks time, all right? So angiogenesis, which is normal for healing, good for our body, when tumors hijack it, it the, the oxygen and nutrients allow the cancer to explode in growth. So tea containing the catechins cuts off the blood supply, prevents tumor angiogenesis, and that is one of the most powerful and important ways that green tea can actually be beneficial. Now, I like to drink green tea um, every day. In fact, I have a cup of it right here. Walk the walk, and um, I find it really relaxing. Uh, I drink green tea uh, all throughout the day, especially in the evening, um, but green tea actually is something that uh, is goes back tens of thousands of years. If you look at Asia, uh, tea na bushes, tea plants naturally grew there, uh, and they are hand-picked. They are dried under the sun. They are lightly roasted over a uh, fire, and then the process takes off in order to be able to um, uh, convert them into different types of tea. You mix them with jasmine flowers for jasmine tea. You grind it into a powder to make matcha. Um, you roast it deeper in, um, in order to be able to create black teas, which are also beneficial for your health, by the way. Not just green, but black is also good. Somewhere in between is uh, uh, oolong tea, which is kind of a medium tea. And then you can ferment tea. It's called pu'er, beautiful tea. But let's start, with, let's stick with green tea for a second. Green tea has these anti-cancer benefits. So one of the questions is how much, uh, how do you actually make the green tea uh, and how much should you drink? Well, listen, I like using loose leaf tea. You can actually brew it in a pot with hot water. Don't ever drink um, a tea with uh, boiling water you just put in there. That actually, there's that scalding liquid has been shown to increase 
the risk of cancer because you're injuring the esophagus. So do not do that. Let the tea cool down. And actually it takes that time of cooling down to also steep out the catechins. That's a little uh, tip for you. And if you're using a tea bag, you want to dunk the tea bag, all right, uh, in order to be able to shake out those catechins into the liquid. When it actually is uh, 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 cool enough to be able to sip comfortably, then sip it. Two to three cups of tea a day actually has been shown to be beneficial for many different um, uh, types of conditions. But the most important thing that I like is that it tastes great and it's actually relaxing, okay? Next food we're going to talk about is brassica. Brassica uh, is a type of uh, vegetable. It's a class group of vegetables and claim contains broccoli, uh, cauliflower, bok choy. Uh, it's a green vegetable that uh, you can saute, uh, common in many different types of cultures. Uh, if you find it in Mediterranean, you find it in Asia. And what's actually in these brassica vegetables are sulforaphanes. These are another natural chemical. And these sulforaphanes, what do they do? They boost the immune system, right? Good, strong immune system, knocks out uh, microscopic cancers, uh, also lowers inflammation. Inflammation is like the gasoline on a fire, making the cancer grow hotter and faster. When you actually uh, calm inflammation, you're putting out the fire, all right? Uh, and actually that is uh, very helpful when you want to fight cancer. The other thing uh, that uh, uh, the, the brassica does, it actually contains the sulforaphanes that actually are anti-angiogenic. They starve the cancer by cutting off the blood supply. And this has also been shown um, with uh, uh, broccoli, for example. Now, here's something really interesting. This is a pro tip. The grown-up broccoli is not just the treetops. That's what we used to always eat when I was eating when I was a kid. Your mom always told you, eat those treetops. Okay, and the treetops do have the sulforaphanes, but it turns out that the stalk, the long stem, of a broccoli. Broccoli is actually mostly a stem. It's like a tall tree with uh, some treetops on it. The treetops have the sulforaphane, but the stalk has twice as much of the good stuff. So if you're actually cooking broccoli, um, cook, this, cook the treetops, uh, the florets is what they call them, but also save that stem. Stem, if you slice it on a diagonal and saute it, absolutely delicious. You'll find it in a lot of uh, Asian dishes that way. If you don't want to saute it, you can actually just put it into a food processor and make a broccoli soup. You want to add a little oregano in there. Uh, it really makes a broccoli oregano soup is actually absolutely delicious. I actually included that uh, broccoli oregano soup recipe uh, in my book, Eat to Beat Disease, uh, if you're actually interested uh, in it. Okay, so broccoli, cancer fighting. The next food we're going to talk about is papaya. Now, most people don't think about papaya uh, as a cancer fighting food, but this is actually sort of an oblong football sized and kind of uh, oval shaped uh, fruit, tropical. Uh, when you cut it open, when it's ripe, it's actually bright uh, orange inside with little black seeds. You scoop out the seeds and the flesh when it's ripe is absolutely delicious. You can just eat it out with a spoon, slice it up, put it onto a plate and just uh, and have it for breakfast, have it um, uh, after dinner for a dessert. Absolutely delicious. Now, papaya, as has been shown, to actually um, lower the risk of lung cancer. Now, why is that? Well, that red color in papaya contains carotenoids, something called beta-cryptoxanthin uh, and beta-carotene. And these uh, actually are also anti-inflammatory. And you guessed it by now, you get the drift. It's actually anti-angiogenic as well. All right, so we went through tea, we went through broccoli, um, brassica, and now we're on to papaya. Um, I love to have papaya for breakfast. It's a great way uh, to get some fruit. It's not very sweet, which is an advantage if you need to watch the amount of sugar you eat. And speaking of sugar, uh, sugar and fruit is perfectly fine for most people. All right, don't eat too much of it. Eat a reasonable amount of it, and the whole fruit is always going to be easier on your metabolism because it has less sugar in it than having the juice. So I always recommend having papaya fruit as opposed to papaya juice if you're going to actually uh, enjoy papaya. All right. And, and most places actually have papaya. You don't have to go to the tropics, although wonderful to be there. Uh, and if you go to uh, tropical countries, do look for papaya, but you can actually find it at the grocery store. 
By the way, um, frozen papaya chunks are also really good as well. The frozen uh, uh, chunks, uh, they actually trap all those bioactives, so um, you're perfectly fine. Cancer starving, anti-inflammatory. All right, next food uh, we're gonna talk about are purple potatoes. If you haven't seen a purple potato, it is a beautiful uh, potato. Regular potatoes, kind of brown, dirty looking. Purple potato, you could tell even from the outside, uh, there's something interesting because it's purplish on the outside, but when you cut it in half and hold it open, man, that is a beautiful purple color. And the purple comes from a natural dye called anthocyanin. Anthocyanins are bioactives. And these bioactives, you guessed it, lower inflammation. They cut off the blood supply to tumors, anti-angiogenic, against tumors. Cuts off the blood supply feeding cancers. And there's one additional thing that I think is absolutely brilliant about purple potatoes and the research that's been done on them in a lab is that purple potatoes actually have been shown to kill cancer stem cells. Now, cancers are just an abnormal mass of cells, but when they keep on coming back, they need their own stem cells to regenerate themselves. You know, when a cancer patient actually um, has their tumor uh, removed by surgery, treated by chemo or radiation, and you're done, right, for five years, but Sometimes they come back. Well, the reason those cancer cells come back is because of their stem cells. That cancer figures out how to resurrect itself. Uh, uh, and so purple potatoes actually have been shown to kill uh, colon cancer stem cells. What an amazing thing. Plus a beautiful food uh, uh, to boot. Now, by the way, if you actually cook put purple potatoes, steam them, saute them, bake them, do it however you like. You can make a purple potato soup. Uh, I have a recipe for purple potato gnocchi in my first book. Uh, absolutely beautiful. Uh, if you want to actually make it even uh, even better for your gut microbiome, all right, because uh, uh, there's fiber and potato, um, uh, and you actually put it in the fridge, turns into resistant starch, uh, easier to digest, uh, and also um, helps uh, your gut microbiome become uh, healthier. So purple potatoes, Check them out. Hey, just a quick note. I wanted to share another great resource with you. Look, I love eating seasonally. When foods are in season, they taste fresher, their flavors are better, and they have, more importantly, more bioactives that help your body activate your health defenses. So they're better for you as well. And I put together a special guide that shows you some of these foods called three disease fighting foods for the spring. Trust me, these are the foods that you're gonna to wanna to put in your cart the next time you're in the grocery store or when you're at the farmer's market. Get my guide for you right now for free in the caption below. Now, let's get back to the video. All right, let's talk about uh, next food. We're gonna talk about pomegranates. Speaking about purplish, reddish um, uh, foods, the pomegranate, also a tropical uh, fruit, although you can find them uh, in uh, the most grocery stores now, they are, kind of like a big apple with a thick skin and a little bit of a crown at the very top. They're heavy. And you know why they're heavy? Because they're filled with seeds that around every seed uh, uh, is a little, uh, little bit of liquid, and that's pomegranate juice. Now, this, uh, these seeds uh, uh, and pomegranate juice are packed with bioactives. These are naturally occurring chemicals that give foods their biological punch. Okay, this is what you eat to beat disease um, is, is, are these foods with these bioactives. And in pomegranate, they're called elagitanins. Now, elagitanins uh, also help to give uh, the, the bites, the kind of acidity, um, and also contribute to the color of the pomegranate. Um, you want to be careful when you actually um, eat and work with pomegranate because that dye around the seeds will stain your clothes if you're not careful. All right. Um, but absolutely delicious. You know, by the way, each seed looks to, like a little ruby, beautiful red color. You ever see pomegranate in the salad? Uh, I had a Syrian salad the other day called Fatouche, and it had little pomegranate seeds in it. So as you're eating the salad, you bite into it, these little ruby, uh, fruity rubies, and an explosion of sweet uh, flavor and juice. Absolutely delicious. Okay. So what do Elijah Tannins do? Well, they do a couple of things. Uh, pomegranate uh, uh, elagitanins have been shown to 
cut off the blood supply to tumors, all right, starve cancer, anti-angiogenic. And in fact, clinical studies have even been done in men with prostate cancer showing that pomegranate juice can actually slow down the rise of PSA. Now, if, uh, you don't know, PSA is a blood marker that goes up when you have prostate cancer. And for men who are actually um, having their PSA go up, 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 um, having pomegranate juice pretty much um, kept them at a uh, uh, cruising altitude so they wouldn't actually uh, keep rising. Pretty amazing, right? So what do we think actually is going on? Well, it turns out elijah tannins are anti-angiogenic. They cut off the blood supply to cancer. And in the case of prostate cancer, would make the prostate um, cancer harder, make it harder for them to actually grow uh, and become more aggressive. Hence, we think this is actually why the PSA actually is able to be leveled off. Um, now, the other thing that pomegranate juice does, which is really amazing, is that the elijah tannins, um, which you eat, goes trickles down your gut, goes down to your lower gut, your colon, and it stimulates your colon to produce natural mucus, right? We think about mucus normally in the, uh, in the upper throat, back of the mouth, right? If you wanna actually have spit, right? But mucus is all throughout our GI tract, all throughout our intestines, and in the colon, when your colon uh, secretes mucus, mucin, um, it helps a natural healthy gut bacteria called Acromancia mucinophila. Some people say mucinophilia, wrong. Acromancia mucinophila, this is one of your best friends in, of gut bacteria because Acromancia, when it comes to cancer, talks to your immune system, makes your immune system a lot beefier and stronger in the battle against cancer. So here's pomegranate with pomegranate juice with a lot of tannins that actually lower inflammation, they starve cancer by cutting off the blood supply, they help um, nurture your gut microbiome, including an organism, Acromancia mucinophila, that actually talks to your immune system and helps your immune system pounce and get rid of cancer. All right? Five foods that actually um, help fight cancer. Let's go through them. Green tea, brassica, these like broccoli, uh, papaya, purple potatoes, and pomegranate. I hope you found this uh, useful and thank you for watching. Hi there, if you enjoyed watching this video, I know you'll love the next one. Stay here and check it out and I'll see you there.